only transmission. This is Gemini Control standing by. There were several difficulties with that uh, astronaut maneuvering unit. For one thing, uh, the uh, transmissions were garbled. The communications between uh, Cernan and Stafford uh, were not adequate. A loud gargle is the way Stafford called them uh, for them to safely let Cernan uh, depend on that communications link alone. Also, Cernan has been having great difficulty with his visor. It's frozen up, uh, crossed it over, and he would not be able to see out there in space. Let's hear some more of the conversation. Okay, we have that. Roger, and we concur in the no go. Stafford reporting also that it uh, take four to five times more energy, four to five times more work for Cernan to get that AMU unit working. Let's listen again. Hawaii, Captain Houston flight. Go flight. Roger, if you get a chance, you could ask him to turn around and see if he can get some sunlight into the adapter area. Uh, he said that he was attempting to get the sunlight on him now. Okay, fine. With the sunlight on him, uh, they... Roger, we understand. With the sunlight on him, they might be able to light warm away. up and uh, okay, he's end back that uh, freezing and the uh, fogging of the visor. That probably will happen. But all of these other malfunctions with the AMU mean that, uh, as you heard, Stafford had recommended and the ground had accepted the recommendation that they abandon that AMU experiment. What hasn't been entirely clear to us here on the ground is whether the visor that is fogged is the uh, primary visor, the same sort that the, all the astronauts wear, or this the... This is Gemini Control, Houston, uh, 51 hours, 8 minutes into the flight. At last report, Cernan said that he still had approximately 75% fogging condition on his visor and uh, while the situation is still in some doubt it does not appear that the AMU will be used during the mission they're going to have another reevaluation as we move into the California area of acquisition we are acquiring now at California and let's stand by well apparently there is some reconsideration in Houston some reevaluation the last five minutes. At, at 12.44 Eastern Daylight Time, they said no go for the AMU. Now they're reconsidering. Hawaii has LOS. Roger, Hawaii. They lose contact now with the... Sorry about that AMU. constant concurrences from Houston for a no-go for the astronaut maneuvering unit, but Paul Haney still says they're considering the matter, and it does not appear they're going to conduct the AMU experiment. Apparently that fogging is disappearing now. They're down to 50% fog. Oh, 
Okay, I'm on high call and I'm staying right now. Uh, Call is my uh, orbital map there. You see where they are. Uh, you might have Gene check his uh, emergency bottle pressure when he gets a chance. Roger, we will report it. He's on a high rate and he is still talking. Roger, when he can see well enough to read that bottle pressure, we'd like to get an idea what it is. Well, Roger, we'll do. Kate, can you read your emergency bottle pressure on the chip? Yes, about 6800. Just look at your copy, 6800. Roger, very good. Hey, uh... Like there's an outline in the contrails down there. You can see out there? I can see right through my nose, but I can't see in front of my eyeballs. We're coming up to LA. I've got the false three at Udio and uh, down there. With the mountains around it. I've got the tallest ladies down there. Yeah, that's some kind of a first, Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, Tom, what's that guy doing with the Texas uh, driver and the Texas license out there on the California highway? Which one is Tom? Which freeway? Yeah, that motorcycle. Oh, the Golden State freeway. Yeah. Okay, Tom, I'm going to go ahead and get the Golden State freeway. Okay, Tom, what's that guy doing with the Texas uh, driver and the Texas license out there on the California highway? Which one is Tom? Which freeway? The Golden State freeway. Yeah. Okay, I got my left eye, and I can see it through, and I can see it through my nose, the whole right side, and the uh, extreme left side are still fogged. Okay, he said he could just see it through his nose and one little hole in his left eye. I can see it up here. He's pretty well fought over it to about 60 to 70 percent of his fighting. All right, your time, and we're copying Gene pretty good, too. Okay. This fogging means that, uh, in effect, Cernan's wearing a shutter out there. You can okay. see very little He's around it. Okay, little rest down. Back to the passing right over also, Trump. Presumably what they're going to do is wait for the heat of the uh, daytime pass over the United States uh, to uh, try to dissipate uh, that fog control, Houston. We and then bring Cernan in. We want the AMU uh, decision made by Stafford was no go. We've canceled the AMU experiment. Cernan is back on the spacecraft, uh, electrical power and oxygen. And at present time, he's taking a little rest as the spacecraft moves across the New Mexico area. The attempt to connect up with the uh, totally independent astronaut maneuvering the AMU. The amazing visual definition that he could see through uh, a little spot where his nose was, but he could not see through where his eyes are. But apparently, uh, as to uh, demonstrate that his vision wasn't completely as obscured, he asked why that uh, motorcycle or car down, on there, down there on a California freeway had a Texas license plate injecting some levity into the situation, which uh, I suppose is needed at this point. We're showing 51 hours, 14 minutes into the flight here, and we expect the Texas station to acquire momentarily. Turning is, uh, in effect, uh, as if you were seeing the in the in uh, your automobile and the windshield and the windows were all fogged up with a little bit of crack uh, down about where the radiator cover is. Uh, this is about what he can see out hey, through his visor. I like the color of one down there that's concerned. Uh, I'm so sorry about this. Houston, uh, Tom, Tom, we're not concerned a bit. Stafford apologizing for the fact that... Well, I'm standing here. I might break you. The bathtub did hang up, by the way. Uh, one arm rail was deployed. The foot rail was deployed. Uh, the uh, front arm rail and with the umbilical guard were not deployed. They were hung up with the bathtub. I was able to get back there without any problem. Uh, I thought it was just hanging loose. And I uh, spun the bathtub loose. The arm rail came out. The umbilical guard came out. So I was flying away.
copy. That's Cernan speaking, of course. There's Stafford's voice again. Temperature goes down about to, uh, to a minus 250 degrees. Houston, Cernan's moving up now on the forward end of the spacecraft to retrieve the rear view mirror, which he mounted on the docking bar at the uh, in, earlier in his extravehicular activity. We have no firm estimate yet on just when Gene will return to the spacecraft. We would expect it to come perhaps five to ten minutes now. The flight plan showed that he could remain out to up to five hours and 50 minutes. He may elect to take the full time. It's uh, just not known at this point. His fogging is now reduced to about 40%. Let's go back for additional conversation. Cernan is back uh, in the forward part, or working his way toward the forward part of the spacecraft now, having spent the night side pass uh, back in the adapter section and finding that this astronaut maneuvering unit was not functioning properly so that he could use it in space. Another disappointment for the flight of Gemini 9. This million dollar unit, uh, the communications did not work, they were garbled, uh, and it's presumed that is in the AMU unit itself. And then uh, the arm would not distend, that's the arm on, that, on which the controls are for turning to maneuver in space. It was four to five times as hard to get into the unit as planned. Which obviously tired Cernan. And then he had this additional problem of his visor fogging over in that minus 250 degrees of the night side pass. A increased flow of oxygen didn't do the job and coolant didn't do the job. And the visor is still fogged over to something a little less presumed now than 40%. But with 60% with vision uh, through the visor, he is going forward to take that mirror off. The mirror, which uh, was going to permit, uh, or did permit Stafford to watch him at the rear end of the spacecraft. And it is presumed now that he will return to the spacecraft, uh, to the hatch. We do not know that for a fact as yet. He's now approaching Florida. that 25-foot 25, 25 tether line which carries the oxygen from the spacecraft and a hard line communication. Houston, go. Uh, Roger, we, uh, we agree with that, Tom. Okay. I believe he said... I believe he said he was fogging up again uh, and was coming on in. Stafford's communication to the ground saying that they decided to bring him on back into the spacecraft.